Well, hello, I'm Mike Festiva. Welcome back. In this video, we'll take a really simple three-point receiver hitch adapter I bought off of Amazon. It was a little on the light duty side, so I beefed it up with some salvage metal. Put a Harbor Freight $20 boat winch on here. Not only can you tow around trailers with it, it's also a log boom, because I use this thing for pulling logs out of the woods to my sawmill. If you're not familiar with my channel, about seven years ago I built a sawmill from scratch. So I'm doing a lot of milling and uh, it just makes getting logs out of the woods a lot easier. Plus you can use the hydraulic lift of your three point. Definitely a time saver and a back saver. So stick around, enjoy the video. So my initial feeling for this three-point attachment was the box tubing was ridiculously thin. So we're gonna grab some cardboard, make a template, and uh, cut actually out some plate metal for it to gusset it up a little bit. So keep in mind, most of my projects, including this one, I just design on the spot as I make them. So in this video, you'll get to kind of see how this project evolves. So here I'm just measuring the standoff distance from the plasma nozzle to the edge of the guide so I can actually remove the distance from the cutting jig. Keep in mind most of these tools like these digital calipers, there will be links below in the description. And if you do order through those, they do help me out, so I do appreciate that. So here I'm just grinding off all the powder coating in that welded area and I always like to grind it way back further than I think and I should have actually ground it even further because it just smokes and burns and causes some problems for me later on as I start welding this thing. So all the metal I used in this project, I salvaged. I made a pretty good video a few years back about salvaging cheap to free metal, all the spots I like to look for it. And uh, if you're interested in welding, I think that video could help you out. Definitely get you into the market for scrap metal like this for uh, cheap to free. So I'll put a link to that video down in the description below.
So at this point I got the boom completely welded out and I want to put some side angle bracing so I grabbed some salvage angle iron I had and start mocking this part up. So if you do a lot of metal work, I highly recommend picking yourself up a metal cutting chop saw. They're extremely fast, they don't kick up a bunch of dust like the abrasive saws, and they just leave a really clean finish whether you're cutting 90s or 45s or anything in between. Definitely speeds up your work. So if you notice, I put a little bit of a bend to the angle iron there. I noticed it just fit a lot better mocking this whole thing up before I welded it if I just put a nice bend to it. So keep in mind, I built this and I scaled it for my small 18 horsepower tractor. I didn't overbuild it for like say a 50 horsepower tractor to be pulling 30 foot long logs. I just built it heavy enough to hold up well for the work I plan to do with it. I try to balance out everything weight, size, and function. So one thing that could be an issue with this, and it's a simple fix, we won't know until we haul a log with it, is the cable is naturally wrapped from the factory around the base of the winch here. And it could come over here and maybe bend this rod and cause a problem for the release mechanism. If that's the case, we'll just rewrap the spool with the cable coming over the top, but we really won't know if it's an issue until we haul a log. So let's go up in the woods and grab a 12 footer. So I'm pretty sure that thing's going to take a beating, so we'll probably wrap the cable around the top here. So I think that thing's going to get bent up.
So this is a 12 and a half foot Douglas fir log, this first one. In the bottom end, it is 14 inches across. This log here is 13 and a half inches across and might max out the tape measure here. Yeah, this is a 16 foot five inch log. They've been cut for about a year now up in the woods and it's just been kind of a pain. I built the log arch which works great for eight and 10 foot logs but these longer ones it just off kilters the weight too much, doesn't work. So pretty happy about that. I can get these on the mill and start milling them in some timber. Be pretty good. So I'm pretty happy about this boom setup on this uh, tow receiver, three point setup. It's gonna be quick on off here. And the only thing that I think is actually, I thought this was gonna be the lightest weight section, but we gusseted it up as much that I think the winch is the lightest weight section. I know I probably should have flipped it around and had the double bolt at the top instead of the single. I wouldn't be dealing with this rod down here as much because it's starting to buckle up the edge of the winch. So maybe flip it around. I just like the idea of winching from this side. It's just more comfortable to me than not winching the other side. But So I'm gonna probably clamp this edge down and actually just weld the winch, just something I can cut off later if I break it. Just weld it right to the winch plate. Other than that, it works pretty good. I might actually, I like having the receiver because it's something for the log to butt up against if you're sliding and going down a hill. But I might actually make something that you can slide into the receiver that's just like a bash plate for the log to hit up against. That's future stuff as I start using it more. I still gotta get some paint on it. Uh, word of advice for towing anything with tractors, whether you make something homemade or you get a professionally manufactured log, kind of a boom like this, or anything you're doing with tractors is, um, heard of a story a long time ago, an old timer that was logging in the woods in the 60s with big two wheel drive tractor and he was dragging a log out of the woods and it caught a stump and he couldn't get to the clutch pedal in time, wasn't paying attention, the whole thing came up and toppled over and uh, killed him. So yeah, you got to be careful about that kind of stuff and the higher you get and the further out you get all this, the more leverage you have of causing the tractor to come up, especially whatever you're towing to get snagged on something. So whenever I'm towing anything, I tow at a slow speed. I pay attention to what I'm doing. I'm always covering the clutch and the brake with my foot because worst comes to happen, like if you get up against something, the front end starts coming up, push in that clutch and ease on those brakes. Just word of advice, like anything you do with tractors, you got to be cautious with them just because they got a lot of torque. My tractor seems to, it's only a 2,500 pound tractor. So when I do run into something that I cannot just be basically pull, it will just start kind of digging the tire slowly into the ground. We got soft soil around here. We're not cruising around on rock where you get better traction. So anytime you're towing anything with the tractor, just be cautious about it. But this is gonna really help out milling. And if you guys aren't familiar with my channel, check out some of my other videos, consider subscribing. I built this mill quite a few years ago, I think seven, eight years ago. The initial mill was, I used a bunch of motorcycle parts, pallet racking, and I got videos I'll put down below in the description. You can click on those. Original mill I built for 250 bucks. Since then I added electric power height and electric uh, power feed for so I'm not pushing it through the log anymore. Actually got a gantry, I can just ride on that and control it. And the whole mill, I think it's about five, $600 total into this whole mill. And it's the equivalent to maybe a $7,000 mill. So check out those videos if you're interested and you got trees on your property and you already doing stuff like this. All right, until next time, take care. Bye.